Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be checking out this Raspberry Pi hat that was sent to me by my sponsor PCBWay. This is a PoE hat for the Raspberry Pi and I genuinely think that this thing is awesome. So today, I'll be demonstrating this hat, setting it up and walking through that process, and I'll also make a little Wi-Fi access point with a Raspberry Pi using this hat. This specific Pi hat is made for the Raspberry Pi 5 which is the ultra new shiny one. PCBWay sent me this Raspberry Pi 5 for this video, as before now, I didn't have one, so this will also be my first time messing with the Pi 5, which I'm quite excited about. In any case, this is the little PCBWay PoE hat for the Raspberry Pi 5. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm saying when I say PoE, it stands for Power Over Ethernet. Power over Ethernet is a standard that allows you to supply both data and power over one Ethernet cable and is used in Wi-Fi access points as well as some security cameras and other devices. This little hat is a very compact one that I also think looks very well put together. The PCB quality is, as always, great, and the solder joints are also looking amazing. While I flash Raspberry Pi OS Lite to an SD card and make sure that my Raspberry Pi 5 works good before I put the hat on, let me tell you a little bit more about PCBWay, who is the sponsor of this video and also the maker of the PoE hat. PCBWay is a company that provides high quality custom manufacturing services, such as 3D printing, CNC machining, and of course, PCB manufacturing. However, PCBWay also makes and sells a lot of little electronics modules. This PoE hat is obviously one of these modules, however, PCBWay also makes a ton of other interesting hats and microcontroller boards. Plus, you can even get many of them for free if you participate in PCBWay's events to earn beans, which you can exchange for these modules. At the time of this video's release, PCBWay's extended celebrations of its 10th anniversary should still be going on. If you're fast, you might be able to sneak in in time to participate in the lucky draw and earn some beans. If you can't make it this time though, don't worry, as PCBWay has these hats and other boards readily available on their website all the time. Check out PCBWay and their services at the link in the video description. Alright, now I know that the Pi is working, which I tested by powering it with a normal power supply and SSHing into it. So now, let's assemble the hat. Assembling the hat is a really easy process. All you have to do is plug the long pins on these headers in through the bottom of the PCB, and then it's almost ready to be plugged in. And when you're plugging those headers in, make sure not to miss the little 4-pin header that's separate from the GPIO header, as that's really important for a PoE hat like this one. Now before you plug the hat assembly onto the Pi, I would attach the three required brass standoffs to the Pi first. After this is done, the hat can then be plugged into the board, and the screws that hold the hat to the standoffs can be installed. And with that, the hat's installation is all done. Now before I move on to messing around with and testing out this hat, I would like to give one more quick note on the assembly of it, because I'd just like to say that I really appreciate the inclusion of a fourth standoff and nut. Even though the hat itself only requires three standoffs for mounting, including this fourth one is nice as it allows the Pi to sit evenly on a flat surface instead of wobbling. Plus, I guess if you manage to lose one, you're still going to be able to secure the hat fully. Now, this PoE hat does require some setup as indicated by its product listing on PCBWay's website. So, I was initially unsure of whether or not you'd need to power the Pi with a regular power supply while the hat was on, then set up the hat, and only after that be able to use PoE. If this was the case, I would have been quite disappointed, because this means you're still going to need a proper Pi power supply to get your Pi running, and depending on your project and the materials you have, that might not be something you want to go out and pick up. Of course, I'm going to test whether or not the PoE hat works right out of the box, and if you can set up the PoE hat while you're using it. There is nothing saying that you can't do this, so let's see if it works. I'm first going to need some kind of a device to give PoE power to the Pi, and sadly, since I don't have any PoE switches in the server rack near my filming bench, this means an old friend is going to make another appearance. Welcome back to the bench, the Juniper Networks EX3300-48P that I couldn't make quiet enough for my use case and because of that, has spent several months under my bed because it's just too cool to sell off. In any case, for today, this is going to be functioning as the world's most overkill PoE injector. However, if you're wondering if you're going to need a switch on this scale to use this PoE hat, you do not need to worry because you don't need a gigantic enterprise switch to be able to supply sufficient PoE power. Any PoE providing device, be it an injector or a switch that supports PoE Plus and has 30 watts of spare power budget should work fine. 
PoE Plus allows for about 30 watts of power to be delivered, which is what this Pi needs as it runs on 5 volts 5 amps, which is 25 watts. This means that really any switch or injector that does PoE Plus should work fine, but do be aware that not all switches can afford to run all of their PoE ports at full power simultaneously. This Juniper here can only do 15 watts per port if all 48 ports are running PoE devices, so just make sure that you have that power budget available. However, if your switch that supports PoE Plus has 30 watts of spare PoE power, your Pi will work great with it. After plugging only a singular cable into the Pi, which I think is just so cool, I saw the Pi's status light as well as a power light on the PoE hat light up, indicating that the Pi was getting power and hopefully booting up. I also checked the Juniper status and saw that the port the Pi was plugged into was set to be able to supply 30 watts of power, of which it was only providing about 5 watts so far. Great, so powering up the Pi with the PoE hat before tweaking some setup options works, which is absolutely great to see. Now, let's tweak those settings while powering the Pi through the hat and see if that works. After SSHing into the Pi, which basically allows me to control it through a terminal window on my main desktop computer, instead of using a keyboard, mouse, and monitor with the Pi directly, I began to follow PCBWay's instructions. These instructions are written for the Raspbian terminal, so if you're using regular Raspbian with the GUI and have your Pi plugged into a monitor, open a terminal window for this. If you've chosen to use Raspbian Lite like I have, all you get is a command line, so we're ready to go. The first two things I did were run the sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade dash y commands to update the system. After those commands were finished running, I gave the Pi a quick reboot. Now there are two main steps that are specified by PCBWay to get this hat running perfectly. The first step is to update the bootloader on the Pi, and the second step is to remove the 3 amp power supply limitation, as our PoE hat is capable of providing more than that. Updating the bootloader is relatively easy and can be done with the sudo pi eeprom update space a command. I'll have them on screen because reading these out is a little weird. After this is done, you should reboot the Pi with sudo reboot. Now that the bootloader is updated, we can edit the eeprom's config to allow the 5 amps of max current. Run the command sudo pi eeprom config space dash dash edit to bring up a window where we can enter a line that will disable the 3 amp current limit. We can add a new line and add the text PSU underscore max underscore current equals 5000 with all the letters being capitalized. Then hit control O and control X to save and exit. The Pi will do a little bit of updating to its EEPROM, and after that, the PoE should be working exactly as intended. Now that our Pi's PoE is set up, I'm going to try to turn this Raspberry Pi into a Wi-Fi access point just for the fun of it. Is this the best use of a Pi 5, or the only thing that you can do with a Pi 5 that's PoE enabled? Absolutely not. But I think it's cool, and I want to play with it today before I wrap up this video. I'll link to the guide that I followed to set this up in the video description, so if you're looking for exactly what's going on in this, check out the guide itself because I don't want to read out all the commands. I did initially try to set this hotspot up on the Pi over SSH, however, for some odd reason, I was unable to get the hotspot to function right when I configured it all over the SSH terminal. So, I just used a monitor, keyboard, and mouse locally on the Pi to set this up. I'm not sure why that worked, while SSH didn't, but I'm not going to dig too deep into it. If you know, let me know in the comments. After running through all the setup commands, the access point was up, and I could access it with my laptop. While it isn't fast, it's still pretty cool, and since I can access the Pi over SSH from my desktop while the access point is still running, I could imagine that you could run some other services on here at the same time. Maybe if you have a bunch of low bandwidth Wi-Fi enabled IoT devices in one place in your house, you could make an access point like this, connect them to it, and also run some other software on the Pi itself for managing them. I think that this little PoE hat is a really cool product from PCBWay that will allow for a ton of cool projects to be made. Obviously, it could make a cool little network hub or Wi-Fi access point that you can place anywhere you can run an Ethernet cable to, but you could also do a bunch of other things with this. If you have a bunch of 3D printers and several Pis that are running 3D printer management software on them, you could seriously clean up some of the power cables by moving everything over to PoE. Also, if you're someone who enjoys playing with Raspberry Pi compute clusters with upwards of four Pis working together, PoE Pies could make the power cable situation so much cleaner. Now, I'm not personally a Raspberry Pi expert, 
but there are a ton of people on the internet who are and who can show you how to set really cool things up with your Pi. Things that could maybe be made even cooler with the addition of PoE power for the Pi. I hope that I've been able to provide some useful information on this little PoE hat from PCBWay and maybe even inspired a project. If you can't tell already, I think that it's a really great product for a reasonable price and totally recommend it if you think you have a Pi project that could benefit from being PoE powered. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.